Hello everybody and welcome back to Teens Things and In-Betweens. For this week we are going to be doing rock painting. There is a bit of a movement you might be familiar with where you'll find rocks hidden out kind of all throughout nature, usually in parks. This one's my favorite one. <laughs> anyway, what you're going to need for this project is a cosmetic sponge, acrylic paint markers or paint in a thin brush for writing, nail polish, not gel polish, but regular polish, temporary tattoos, and spray paint. Also, it's pretty helpful to have some cardboard or a paper bag to work on. So what I've done is I went outside to see if I could find any rocks just in my yard. My husband and I bought this place where the backyard was sort of a mess and I wasn't sure if I would find any. And I found so many, but these were all super tiny. So Miss Carly was very kind enough to provide me with a bunch. Here I'm just showing you how you can spray paint your rocks to start. I think they look better when you have a clean finish with just one color. This one I was just trying the copper paint. I had actually already painted over the rocks we're going to do today with a light pink. And this I just got at Hobby Lobby. And yes, I am painting a little too close, but it looked like it was going to rain and the wind was really blowing, so I was just kind of trying to get the paint on the rocks. How pretty is that though? It's so metallic-y. This was a rock that I had painted the day before with pink. But I had missed some spots and honestly it wasn't looking super clean so I was trying to see if a second coat would help. It did, but this rock was still a little bit too much of a mess. So here we go. We've got ourselves six rocks. We're only going to paint some of them today. This bigger one is super cool. I ended up wanting to kind of mimic the same design you can see on the top there. This one is the smoothest rock I could find. We have two that are rainbow shaped. I just love the way these are shaped, it's so cool. So I think we'll start out with some nail polish. We're gonna be shaking these up first to make sure the color is all nice and even. I'm using two, one is an SE polish, the other is a polish I got in an Ipsy box years ago. There are polishes I don't use anymore because honestly I like to do my nails with gels and it just makes more sense for me. We're gonna take a cosmetic sponge, and I did actually get these off of Amazon forever ago for nail art. And honestly, we're kinda gonna be doing the same thing. So you'll see there's the longer triangular sides, and then there is kind of the back part, that's what I call it, the rectangle part on the back, and that's what we're gonna do. So I've got my darkest color here, and I'm just gonna paint it on there. Very, very liberally. You wanna be very liberal with this. These sponges suck up a lot of it. You can get a lot of the paint out, but I just find it blends easier when you've got almost a puddle on top. And we're gonna take our second color, put that right next to it, and eventually we're gonna blend these. We're gonna do two stripes first. Now we're gonna start to blend. So I'm adding a little bit more of the darker color to kind of match it up with the lighter color. Super pretty. And I'm just gonna sponge it on. Here I felt as though they blended in a little bit too much, but the darker color was overtaking it, so I decided to just go with it. I think that if I had done more nail polish on the sponge, I think it would have gone a little bit better. So you see me trying that here, thinking, okay, well maybe I'll do a little bit more of the dark. And it actually worked really well. So I just added more of the dark on top there. So pretty, such a nice color. Especially on the light pink base, it looks really nice. And I think we're gonna add a little bit more of the dark. We're gonna blend it down a little bit more so it's kind of half the rock is this dark plum color and the other half is going to be the lighter pinky color. Dab, 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 make the nails fab. Or stones, I guess. <laughs> I have to say this part was probably my favorite. It was very therapeutic to just sponge on the polish and it dries pretty quickly, which is both good and bad. It's good because then of course you can move on if you wanna add something to it, but bad if you're really trying to blend the color super well. Now I had no issues with these polishes. They blended very, very nicely. You'll see 
when I show the finished rock at the end after we've kind of completed its look. Ooh, we going all in on this color. Such a pretty pink. Unfortunately though, I didn't really like this polish on my nails, so I really don't mind using it for a rock. There we go, now you can really see the contrast. It's so pretty. And you can honestly do this with any color. I think it works best if the colors are in the same family, but it's a, gradients will blend no matter what with a makeup sponge. I don't know why it looks kind of like a kidney, <laughs> but it's super pretty and, and the end result is honestly my favorite. Mm, the edges look a little funny here. I think we're going to blend them out too. <laughs> so I've just added more of that dark polish and there's honestly still some of the light polish so it's kind of blended together for one color. So we're just going to make the top a little bit more dark, a little darker. And we're gonna kind of be blending out the sides as we do this. And then I just continue to do that all the way around. It makes it a lot nicer. A little bit better than a sharp line. I honestly probably could sit here painting rocks with nail polish and sponges for a very long time. It was so fun. <laughs> I, a large part of me wanted to do the entire rock like this, but I was like, oh, it's gonna be really hard to hold. I'm gonna have to wait for it to dry. The back still looks really nice. You can't see the gradients. So you could probably hide this and just do one side color and the other side just a normal rock and nobody would know until they picked it up. Time to close up our polishes. We will be coming back to them soon. And our sponge is done too. Good job. Now we're going to move on to temporary tattoos. I've got a couple here. We actually found these in Summer Reading Prizes. They were just kind of buried. <laughs> so we decided to try them for this experiment and I'm gonna go with the rainbow. I think it'll be the easiest to transfer to a rock, but I'm not 100% sure how well it is going to transfer. So crush your fingers. You're gonna peel off the plastic part first. Find a rock that it fits on. Oh, that one's too small. I don't wanna really put it on the big ones. That one's not bad. Does it fit? Mm, not quite. You can see the heart sticking out at the top there. Nope. Let's try this one. Ooh, I don't like that side. This side's better, much smoother. There we go, perfect! You could definitely cut the tattoo out, whatever you're trying to put on it, so you can see the edges better. I was just holding it up to the light. This one was pretty bright. So I was able to see it. So now just like you would with any other temporary tattoo, you're going to take a damp cloth. I've got a Minions paper towel here and a bowl of water and I'm just going to try and make it as wet as possible, smoothing it down and essentially you're trying to burnish the tattoo onto the rock. And normally you want to leave it for like 10 to 15 seconds. And I was holding onto it really tightly. But you're gonna see here in a second, it kind of just fell off. Make it nice and wet. Maybe it was because, oops, I made it so wet. Well, it's fine, it looks really cool. And honestly, I think the wear and tear makes it have a little bit of character, especially because the rock has got so much, so much texture. Pretty cute, I really like this one. I think it would look honestly even cooler with a bunch of glitter over it or like a gloss spray. Yeah, yeah, like maybe some some hollow glitter, maybe? But this guy's gonna be wet for a while, so we're just gonna leave him. Move the paper towel out of the way. Hmm. What should I do next? Ooh, markers, yeah, let's try the markers. I've never used these before. They are Zayar brand. I got them off of Amazon for like 30 bucks and the packaging is super nice and when you open it up you get an insane amount of markers you also get some refillable or replaceable tips you'll see 
I actually don't know that you can quite see it, but on camera when I open one of the purple ones, the tip flies right out, so I just used one of the replacement tips. Oh my god, so many colors. There's metallics, there's whites, there's blacks, there's pastels, there's bright dark colors, and this was so cheap for the amount of markers. Originally, I was going to get Posca paint markers, but honestly, it was a little too expensive for me. This white is the bomb. I think the white really helps make everything really extra. So now I'm just trying to match up the colors that are in the already painted rock. I want to try and recreate that because it's so pretty and so cute. And I would love to have one on my desk at home. This one stays at my desk at work. Okay, so we've got some really pretty metallics here, some pinks. Uh, I think I'm going to use that pink instead of the dark pink. Yeah, now we need a purple. Doesn't really a purple exactly like that, but uh, I think this will be fine. That's fine. Now I'm looking for a black. There we go. Beautiful. These markers are really, really easy to do to use. So all you're gonna do is you're gonna shake them up first. I think I shook them a little too hard, if I'm being honest. But you do want to make sure that you're shaking them. It's gonna be a way that you'll be able to use them quicker. Once you're done shaking them, the paint is kind of, hmm, it's kind of like, uh, I'm trying to think if there's anything similar. You basically, you're going to open it up and there's like a, tap, a little tip at the end that's white and you're going to press down multiple times so you can just hold it down until the paint comes out. So you'll see the paint came out then. Hello. I wrote hi in case you can't see it. So now we're just going to try and draw this design. I'm going to be drawing hearts of different colors. I didn't actually end up doing all the colors on the rock, I don't think. I think I skipped one. I will say with these markers, it's very easy for the paint to pool. So if you're pressing down with the marker at all, the paint will start to pool out. That is something that I was sort of learning to deal with as I went. It's okay. We're gonna draw an outline anyway, so it's fine if it's not perfect. Red is done. Hmm. Is this the purple I want? Oh, there's the tip. All right, so now we're gonna try and replace it. And this was really easy. All I did was put the tip in and then try and click in it. It didn't click in, then it fell out, but then I just held it and then pressed it in on the, uh, I almost said cardboard paper, <laughs> on the paper bag. And then we have our purple. And this ended up matching super well. It didn't look like it would on the cap. I found that the caps didn't really match the color that they ended up being. nicer. So cute. Now I'll try this pink. Uh, it's a little bit of a highlighter pink. It's very, very bright, but eh, as long as it's a different pink from the background, I think it'll be fine. close, but I'm hoping when I add the black outline it'll look fine. Now for some nice light blue. At this point I was just pressing them down until the paint came out. I saw other people tap them, but I think this worked better and it made the paint flow a little bit better than when I was just kind of stabbing it multiple times. Now this blue is so pretty. It came out really nice. 
Now for some yellow, which I really, really liked writing in with this one. It was very easy to use. Some of them were honestly harder than others. I don't know if it's the composition of the colors, like the actual chemicals, but this one was a lot easier to use. Can't really see it without the black outline, but you'll be able to see it later. Now for a teal color, and you can see here we skipped the green. Oh, that looks beautiful. They definitely got easier to use the more I used them. Honestly, I didn't even know that paint markers were a thing. But I recently started watching a YouTube channel that does a lot of art. And she talks about Posca paint markers all the time. But I was like, I don't really want to spend that much money. So I found these on Amazon and they're great. The tip is very, very fine. And it can be a little bit more difficult to use than, say, like a marker. But it's so fun. This one that I'm about to do, the rainbow one, is even easier. It was so much fun. Probably because the rock was also very smooth compared to the other one. But still. So let's see, we're gonna form ourselves a rainbow. I'm digging through my markers to try and find kind of colors that all look together look good together. Because I want to make sure that it's a bit of a gradient going. So we're not really doing the rainbow order per se, so much as an order that looks pretty. <laughs> we need an orange. And maybe a yellow? There we go. Those are nice. Oh, that's so pretty. Now a purple. There we go. Hmm. Do I want to start with the pink or the yellow? I really liked the other yellow, so I think I'm going to start with yellow here. It's really hard to see this outline, but you'll see as I fill it in that it covers the rock a lot and it looks really nice. I'm very, very happy I started with the yellow and yellow is actually my least favorite color. But there was more yellow on this than any other color. See, as I start to paint thicker, it's really showing up. These markers are definitely awesome at covering. And you'll see even when I mess up the lines, I don't, I don't have any lines to mess up on the yellow one, but as I get to some of the darker colors, it's so easy to just go over any of your mistakes with that same color or with a different color and cover them right up. I honestly need more projects to do with these paint markers now. <laughs> I cannot talk enough about them. Now, you can totally not use paint markers. You can absolutely just get a paintbrush, even just like the ones you would have had in like elementary school that, um, you know, the handles and everything are rainbow and the bristles are black. You can absolutely use those too. This was just something that I thought I would try, especially because right now I can't really go to an art supply store or anywhere. At least I'm trying not to. I'm trying to stay inside. And I was able to get these off of Amazon, whereas I couldn't find this brand on some other craft websites. Of course, I'm sure you can find Posca paint pens and other like actual hmm, like artist grade pens. I don't know if artists themselves would use this brand, but it worked really well for me. So now I've got this really pretty orange and I love the way the yellow and the orange look together. It's so nice. And you can see for sure how much the orange is covering up the pink on the rock. So what I'm doing is I'm outlining the rainbow stripe itself or curve, I guess, and then I'm filling it in, but I'm not too worried about the bottom. So the way where the rainbow starts and begins that bottom part there, I'm just going to leave it because I'm going to end up going around the rainbow in white later to kind of clean it up and to also blend it in with the light pink. Let's 
I did end up doing a little bit of a second coat in some spots with the yellow just because I don't think I had gotten enough ink out of it and there were definitely some little holes. Onto the red. I also want to say that I feel like doing small strokes with these pens works a lot better because it's not like a marker tip where it's a felt tip and it's very easy to kind of smooth things out. It is a hard plastic tip. And honestly, that can make drawing straight lines on not smooth surfaces pretty difficult. So again, I'm just outlining and then I'm filling it in. I just love the way this rock looks. I love the shape of the rock itself and then putting a rainbow on it was totally the perfect idea. Now the red and orange look really similar on camera, but in person they look super different. The red is very much a pinky red and it stands out a lot, but they do blend in together on camera. Now we've got some purple. <laughs> this is the same purple I had used with the other rock of the little heart balloons. Do our nice little outline. I wasn't also too worried about making each stripe too thin or too thick because I knew that if I didn't like it, I could always go over it with another marker pen again or paint pen again. I was just mostly trying to see how the colors looked. So pretty. Another thing to note is I am a terrible artist. <laughs> Drawing is not my forte, but I do enjoy it and I enjoy making crafts. So don't feel like you can't do it just because maybe you're not confident in your art. I am not at all confident in my art, but painting a rainbow is not too bad. And if it's not perfect, it's okay because these are going to go outside anyway. And they're probably going to get pretty beat up eventually. Now, one thing I don't show in this video is top coating it because I actually didn't have a top coat and I knew that it wouldn't really make too much of a difference, but you can see in the rock that's already done with the heart balloons, that one is very, very glossy. Somebody already top coated that. These other ones are going to look a lot more matte. Now they're not going to look completely matte, but they're definitely going to look more matte. If you add a glossy top coat to them, whether it be, you could probably use nail polish. I would recommend just getting a spray top coat. You can usually find these pretty easily at craft stores. And then you're just gonna spray the whole thing both sides with that. It's also gonna help seal in your design. So this one I kind of messed up a little bit. It is not exactly the smoothest curve, but I was about to cover it up anyway with a different color, so I just left it. And in a second here, you're gonna see it's not even there. These are very opaque and this is even a lighter color. So you can see that one is one that I literally just painted and I'm already able to paint over it. If I had let the paint pool, you're going to see, I believe you can see that in the clip. My camera did cut off here when I go from the, the final two colors together, but because it didn't pool, I was able to paint directly over it. It was already dry enough to do that. While you guys are watching this, don't forget that our summer reading program is starting. You can see our website to register for summer reading and we've already got some goodie bags set up for you guys to complete your tasks, your reading, and then you're going to contact us for a pickup and come and get your prize bags. I talked in the last video a lot more in depth about these prize bags, but for the teens, we have two different bags that you can earn. Uh, the first one you get once you're halfway through the program and the second one you get when you complete the program. This year, you cannot complete it more than once. I am so sorry, <laughs> but we are working with a new thing called Beanstacks. We're kind of figuring it out as we go, but for the time right now, unfortunately, we weren't any, unable to add in a second go through or, or multiple runs of the minutes that you can read. For the teens this year, we're going to be having 
two different baskets. Now, if you're not a teen and you are a kid or somebody who is under the age of 12, we're gonna have three different baskets for your age group. But for the teens, we've got two different ones. One's going to be a little bit more arts and crafts themed. So if you really enjoyed this craft, for example, or next week's, we're gonna be doing bullet journaling. I think you're gonna really like that basket. Please stay tuned on social media. We will be posting pictures of these as soon as we have them. Last but not least, we're gonna take our white and we're gonna go back while the rainbow dries and we're gonna try and make the little hmm, highlights on these balloons. Now these came out horribly. <laughs> I'll be perfectly honest, the white was super runny and it just didn't really do the job. I think the green and the blue ones are the only ones that look okay. I think it's just a matter of me getting used to these pens. So now we're going to use the black pen to outline them. And again, I didn't really like the black pen. <laughs> I also thought it was a little bit difficult to use. So what I'm doing is just going to outline each heart. Like I said, I am trying to copy the rock that I have on the right there, my finished one. I think due to the texture of the rock, I think it was really hard to do the outline properly. So it's definitely very sloppy. I could probably go back and clean it up, but uh, like I said, these are gonna wear and tear anyway being outside, so I'm not really too concerned, especially because I'm not really planning to top coat these because like I mentioned, I don't have one. So I thought I would just leave them as is. So I'm gonna draw the little handle for the balloon, the little string. And I'm gonna keep going around all of these balloons. Now don't forget the library does still have curbside pickup available despite not being open. So if you want to participate in summer reading but maybe you don't have any books to read or even audiobooks, you can give us a call and we can get some items pulled for you or you can actually log in now to your account on our website and place holds on items. We are pulling those items every morning and then we will, of course, you'll get a notification letting you know when your holds are ready and then you just give us a call and we get it all set up. If you would like pick up though, the way it works is you give us a call and let us know what item or items you're looking for. If we have them, then we will try and pull them off the shelf for you as soon as possible. And then you'll get a phone call trying to set up your pickup time. When your items are ready for pickup, you're just gonna pull into the where the staff normally park. So not the main entrance of the building, but that side entrance across from the post office. And there's different spots that you can park your car in. Once you're parked in a spot, you can either give us a call or text the number that's on the sign and follow the instructions that are on there. Then simply open the window that is not with a passenger or pop your trunk and we drop your items off for you. Love. <laughs> I just wanted to see how well this thing would write. It was okay, but it's still really cute. All right, we're going back for the white boy. Let's see if this time he and I are gonna get along. I was getting very frustrated with this marker at this point. <laughs> oh, right, I need to fix this. Hold on a second, let me fix the pink here in the middle. Goes right on and covers up the purple and makes a nice clean pink, beautiful. One other thing of importance to mention is that we are starting a young adult book club. So if you are somebody who enjoys reading young adult books, we're gonna be meeting every month at the end of the month, the last Thursday of the month, to talk about a different young adult book. This month we're talking about Hunger Games because the prequel about uh, President Snow recently dropped and I thought it'd be really cool to talk about it. Okay, yes, finally the glitter. So here I'm adding a hollow top coat to this here. This is a really awesome brand. It's made by a YouTuber named Christine without an H or simply Nailogical. This polish is called, I think it was the Linear Hollow Taco or Top Coat. And then I'm also gonna be adding some good old fresh unicorn skin or some iridescent flakies on top of that. 
I wanted this one to be super magical looking. Oh, it's so pretty. And then I'm adding more flakies because it's fun. <laughs> and this is a super cheap nail polish. I got it Forever 21 like 10 years ago. Again, it's not something I plan to use anytime soon, so I figured it's a great time to use it on a rock. Oh, look at the hollow and look at the flakies. So pretty. This one's looking good, so I'm not going to actually add glitter. I think it looks cool as is. Last but not least, time to out outline this bad boy. So I'm just going to go around the edges of the rainbow. The idea is to blend it out to the edge of the rock and also to smooth out the lines. So the way this book club is going to meet is we're going to try and do a Facebook Live. I'm not, we're not 100% sure we're going to have that working, but at the time I'm making this video, it seems like we will be able to do a Facebook Live for it. And all you're going to do is hop onto Facebook and join in the conversation. I plan to talk about both the actual original Hunger Games series as well as the movies and of course the prequel. As of right now, I'm only about five or so chapters in. I am definitely going to have it finished before the book club meets, and I highly recommend it. It has been very, very interesting. I'm actually listening to the audiobook version too, which I don't normally do, but it's been really helpful at work. We're allowed to, of course, read any books that are for our book clubs, and it allows me to listen to it and take the book in while also doing other things. Oops. Got some paint on my thumb. And when your paint pen stops working, you can just press it back down again and the paint will start coming out. Oh, that's so much cleaner. Look at how pretty that looks. Very fun. Honestly, it kind of reminds me of Powerpuff Girls. Don't even know why, it just, it just kind of does. Honestly, I am super excited to start this book club. We've been talking about doing a young adult book club for a really long time. And I'm hoping that by doing it online, maybe we can get some people to participate that maybe wouldn't be able to otherwise. And this book club is open to anybody who likes reading young adult literature. So it doesn't have to be somebody who is 12 to 18. Oh, it's so pretty. That one's done. You can be an adult as well if you want to participate. So now that this top part is mostly dry. <laughs> We're going to write something on the back. And this one is going to say make a wish. I don't know. It just seemed very magical. Something about glitter, I feel like, makes everything feel magical. Once these are all dry and top coated, you can do whatever you want with them, but I think it's most fun to hide them in places. I know we've found a number of them hidden on the grounds at the library. I found some stuck behind books at the library. Please don't do that. They probably won't get found. And the point of them is for somebody to find these and get a little bit of happiness. And they're all done. Super, super easy. No, I didn't paint the last two. I just didn't have any ideas. But this one is my favorite. It's so pretty. If you guys end up doing this craft, please take pictures and tag us on social media. I know I would really love to see what you come up with. And don't forget that we will be back every Thursday with a different program for teens, tweens, and in-betweens. I hope you all have an awesome weekend, and I will see you all later. Bye!